Today we're going to be talking about the domain of a function. As you can see on the screen, the domain of a function is all possible into values x for which the function is valid. So let's give you an example. So here's a function, f of x equals x squared. And the question is, um, what is all the possible input values for, for x for which the function is valid? Well, most of you uh, hopefully will recognize this as a quadratic function. Uh, the graph of it looks like a parabola. And there is uh, no value that you can't put in for x. You can put a negative value. For instance, f of negative 1 would be equal to negative 1 squared or 1. You could put um, a fraction, like f of 1 half, which would be equal to uh, 1 half squared, which is 1 quarter. We could put f of negative 1,000, which would be negative 1,000 squared, which would be 1 million. And we could put f of positive 1,000, which would be 1,000 squared, or once again, 1 million. So as you can see, there is no value that we can't put for x. For any, uh, uh, any real number can be put in for x, and we would get uh, an output that would be valid. So that tells us the domain of this function is all real numbers. So we can say the domain is all real numbers. Another way of writing that is like that. That means the domain is all real numbers. Now let's look, let's look at another example. Uh, here's a function, uh, f of x, which is equal to 1 over x. And the question that you should think about is, is there any possible value for x that you could put in for, uh, that you could put in here that would give you a function that is not valid? And a lot of you may realize, just think about it for a second, is there any value for x that is not allowed? And a lot of you will realize that you cannot put 0 for x. If I were to put 0 for x, so if I were to say f of 0, that means we would have 1 over 0, because we have to substitute uh, 0 for x. And most of you know that this is an undefined function. You are not allowed to divide by 0 in any fraction. Every other value for x will work. We could put a negative number uh, for x f of negative 1 equals 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. You could put a positive number like 4, so you get 1 over 4. You could put a very high number like 1,000 or a million, and we would get 1 over 1,000. But all of these are valid functions, but 0 is not. Therefore, the domain for this function is all possible, real, is all real numbers except x cannot be equal to zero. Therefore, we could say the domain for this function is all real numbers except x is not equal to zero. Let's try one more. Here's another function, f of x equals the square root of x of, let's say, 4. That would be the square root of 4, which would be 2. That's valid. Um, you could have even have an f of 0, which is the square root of 0, which is 0. But as most of you know, the minute you put a negative number in there, like, let's say, um, negative 1, you are not allowed to have the square root of negative 1 or any negative number. It's undefined, and you're not allowed to have that. 
So we can say the domain of this function is all values for x that are greater than or equal to 0. So let's do an example. Here we have a problem. f of x equals 4 of x minus 1. If we want to look for the domain, you need to think about what values are you not allowed to have for this function. That would, what, in other words, what values would make it invalid? And we learned just in the previous uh, window that you cannot have 0 in the denominator. And you might notice that f of 1 will give you 4 over 1 minus 1 or 4 over 0. And you are not allowed to have 0 in the denominator. That would make it undefined. Um, and therefore, x cannot be equal to 1. But all of the values will be perfectly fine. So the domain is all real numbers except x is not equal to 1. Let's look at the second problem. It's a graph. And let's assume that this graph continues on forever in both directions. And the negative, uh, so to negative infinity and uh, positive infinity. Therefore, it uh, goes through all x values in both negative and positive directions. Therefore, the domain is all real numbers. Let's do a, another problem. So in this case, we have f of x equals x minus 2 of x minus 3. It's very similar to the previous problem. You should notice that you cannot have a value of 3 for the denominator, because that would give you 0 in the denominator. So f of 3 would be equal to x minus 2 over 3 minus 3, which would be x minus 2 over 0, which we cannot have. And therefore, and every other value will be valid, Therefore, the domain is all real numbers, except x is not equal to 3. Now we want to talk about the range of a function. And the range of a function is all possible output values, the y value, which result from using the function formula. So we have a little example here, y equals 4x. And you might notice that's a linear function. If I were to try and graph it real quick, when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y would be 4. And this would give us a straight line. It would go forever in the negative y direction and positive y direction. There's no value for y which would uh, not be valid. And therefore, we would say that the range of this function is all real numbers because every output value or every y value is valid. And let's do one more uh, problem with range. Here's a function. You might recognize it as a quadratic. And let's try to outline as best we can. We notice it goes forever in the y direction over there, but it intersects at the lowest point, intersects the y-axis at negative 2. And we notice that every y value is valid, except it cannot be less than negative 2, because there are no y values less than negative 2. Therefore, we would say the range of this function is all y values that are greater than or equal to negative 2. Remember, it intersects uh, the uh, y-axis at negative 2. So that negative 2 is valid, valid, and every y value above negative 2 or greater than negative 2 is valid. And so therefore, that's our range. And now it's your turn. For, find the domain of each function below. This will be very similar to the ones you did in the screencast. Try that one. And number two here, if you're having any problems, rewind the screencast. Look at what was said again. That's the advantage of screencast to help you. Um, if you have any problems at all. And finally, find the range of the following function. So I give you a graph just similar to the one we just did and just want you to find the range. If you have any trouble at all, rewind the screencast. And I hope you learned something today. Uh, thank you for being here and good luck until I see you next time.